As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. The league is entering the business end and Green King Sport venues are showing every single televised Everton fixture over the running. With more than 900 sports pubs across the UK, it doesn't matter where you're based, you can catch every single minute of the action. Football's best enjoyed with your mates, so if you're not at the ground this month, get a text in a group chat and head to your local Green King Sport venue to catch the game. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game. Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It is episode 32. It's a weekend where there was no Premier League football, so we don't have to talk about Everton not winning the game of football oh, this week. We're not talking about England, are we? No, nah, we'll just have a general chat. What we've done, joined by Sam Avery again, as usual now. He's full in, Sam's full in. But Sam, what we've done this week is... We've done that thing that sometimes sitcoms do or programmes where we've replaced one of the people who were on it every week with someone who's got similarities, <laughs> but when we'll try not to address the elephant in the room. He's even had his head shaved like the other said ginger who's normally sat there, but we have, of course, got Ned no, in the I, hot no, seat this week. I think going to the barber and say, can I have the ped? This <laughs> is my... This is my style. My what? Ped's your style? No, this, just this is... is Which, look, for the purpose of people style. who are listening to this, what is your style? My hair. Yeah, so what is it? Explain to, it's, to the uh, listeners it's what your hair's like. It's like it's like a fade into a fade. A fade into a fade. A fade, fade of her. On the top. That's not a fade of hair on the top, though. That's yeah, like it a like mop. fades into like a little bit of glamour of ginger. I don't know whether Sam I, I don't say, know whether Sam had backed I say, that up. I say, Dave, 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 just give me enough to just like do something with it. And he's like, I know exactly what you mean. And he does this. Fair play. Fair play. With a fade. Okay. A fade into a little bit of fade glamour. Fade into... I mean, Sam, what a, a fade into a little bit of glamour. Is that how you would describe Ned's hair? As someone who's not been to a barber since 2017, mm. I'm not really in a position of strength to talk okay. much about his hair, but I do like it. And I also... It would have been kind of cool if you swapped Ped for Ned. Mm. I could have been swapped out for Mike Cosgrove. Uh, and then you just come for like all the kind of looky likes. Well, who's, who's doing me then? I mean, uh, who's replacing me? Obviously. Well, no, I'd I'll... say more like Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. <laughs> I don't know whether he's a watch. See what Mike did. Mike was using the Toffee TV environment, wasn't he? Because Mike, uh, it's Mike. Brad Sam, Sam could have got someone far better than Mike Cosgrove, couldn't he? But he went with because Mike's great. <laughs> And Mike could just throw the game. It's just a ball stereotype, isn't it? But like, so like it real? I mean, I mean, like, to be honest, like the thing with Sam is, if Sam grew hair, mm. I would laugh at Sam. But like, ironically, Why? there's people That's that nice... if they shave the hair off, I'd go ha ah, baldy baldy. But like, Sam suits bald. Sam wouldn't look right with 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 hair. But have we seen Sam I, I just with saw a full Sam. moped? Um, we haven't, have we? No, but I, I, that's I because he doesn't. He doesn't have one. Photographs. Uh, okay. Fact, the, so it was my wedding anniversary not not long uh, not long ago, and yeah. obviously all the old photos come out of your wedding day, and you're like, yeah. oh, look at that! Look at the hope in my eyes. Then look at the joy. <laughs> look at the money we had before we had kids. We yeah. had the disposable income. It was incredible times. And my hair on my wedding day was terrible. It was terrible because I was still clinging on and I was oh, balding, okay. but it was just. I mean, wife said this amazing phrase. She said. You look worse then than you do now. Which I thought was a really unusual way to instead of saying you look better now than you did yeah, then. Yeah. You look worse then than you do now. Yeah. You look bad now, but you look worse then. Yeah, Happy that level The level's not good there, is it? <laughs> that level she's not like held you up to a level there, Sam. She could have gone, no. Oh, you've you've glowed up. Love having you yeah. or you've aged you've aged like you're like a fine wine, Sam, the way you're aging here. He's got this persona now, hasn't he? And bald is part of it. I mean, he just took his glasses off for a minute and I was looking up going, what the bloody hell is that? And it, and it just didn't look like Sam to me. I mean, when, when people say Sam Avery, the picture is Sam bald. Well, that, it, it wouldn't be any good if people said Sam Avery and the picture was, say, like Dominic Calvert-Lewin or something, would it? Because that would just be false. No, because Dominic Calvert-Lewin, if you get on stage, 
you know, you'd, it'd be very hard to make you laugh. I don't know. Where Sam's already kind of gave you that with you know with his big glasses and stuff. Okay. He looks okay. kind of like kind of comedic anyway, okay. doesn't he? So. Do you think yeah, Sam? Do you think Sam look. looks like Harry Hill? No. Okay, no. I'm just asking you. I don't think he no. does. I was asking you. Harry Hill's more of a voice to me. <laughs> is he? Yeah. If you say Harry Hill, the first thing I think of is his voice rather than his looks. I think it was just stupidly big collars on his shirt. Yeah, that you know what I mean. <laughs> but fair right. play. Fair play. Um, let's get on with this anyway. By the way, um, Sam was it was it lovely having a weekend where there was no Everton. But on because we had that the week before, obviously. But on top of that, there was wasn't that additional pressure either of looking at other teams around you whether they were winning or not. It was just like, yeah, there's no footy. Basically, it was boss. It was amazing. It was beautiful. The weekend <laughs> before was good, mm. but then I'd forgotten that there was other Premier League games. Yeah, until yeah. The day off. Yeah. But this weekend, I was just like basking in the glory of life. Life's mm. good. There's a, there's a fool good. lives around the corner for me, and I don't know his name, and he doesn't know my name. But we, he's one of those. He's a stop and chatter. Yeah. We'll, you know, if I'm going off the or I'm going to the shop, we'll stop him. You know, a minute, two minutes tops. It's lovely. Yeah. No commitment, just a little no. chat. And he's an Everton fan. That's, mm-hmm. that's probably one of the few things we know about each other. And the last two weekends I've seen him on the way back from the shop, I've just gone good weekend, and he's gone <laughs> no Everton. I've gone I know, and we've just smiled <laughs> and just sort of skipped. <laughs> It's not so good, it's, that is it. It's that isn't good, good is it? It's know what good, I mean? What, what, it, what, what it's probably useful for though is is acting as a uh, like a reset, like mm. a sort of refresher. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not healthy for any of us as fans to kind of take this anxiety constantly, which mm. it has been. If you think it's been pretty much incessant for the last three years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been it has, the yeah. threat of not just like the threat of well, we might finish tenth. Existential nightmare is on the horizon, and it's almost like. It's too much to bear. So you would hope that the way I feel today is quite refreshed. You would hope mm-hmm. that would move up to the players as well. And yeah. They would benefit from this little little break. But it's uh, it's 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 just it it's been glorious, Baz. Yeah, it has, it has, hasn't it? Ned, I mean, the say it was a weird week for us, wasn't it? Obviously, we're normally doing pre match com- you know, content and all of that. But it was just nice, wasn't it, it to just go there's nothing to worry it, about. It just makes me wish that Everything that we're going through, it, Everton didn't it, exist. Is that what it makes no, you wish? No, I mean, okay. what I mean is like with everything off the field would already be done by now because I mean we could have really enjoyed the past couple of weeks. Obviously, we can't. We're waiting on, you know, seven, seven, seven. We've got this appeal, you know, to, in the next couple of days, or if not, it was today, isn't it? The PSR over the next couple of days. Yeah, the hearing starts today. So yeah. there's still that off the pitch worry, um, mm. and then obviously we we discovered last week that we'll have. A week with three home games. One of them's a yeah. decided derby. So I'm yeah. really enjoying no football because that's going to all be three big. are on live. Not only a busy week for us, but a really stressful week for us. But I think having no football um, for those that really need to get away from the stress and anxiety of Everton, having a weekend or a couple of weeks like this makes helps you realise that oh, I could, okay, there's other things to do, mm. and I can enjoy my weekend without the stress of Everton. So if you do need to get away from it, then you just think back to what you did on that week where there was no Everton. A bit of gardening or something. I mean, that sounds good, isn't it? but it's not as easy as that, is it? it is no, it's not. also quite sad. You Remember the other week? Shouldn't have to pull away from something which is meant to be for fun or sports mm. and something that you spend so much money on as well. It shouldn't have to make you feel it's like... It's like Sam's just said, though, it's because we haven't even had, like, one buffer in between, like a season where we finished 11, but there was no danger. We've had... Th- this is just three years piled on top. Yeah, and it, then... it's a continuous... Yeah. Uh, cycle state of misery yeah exactly well um, it's it's compounded by the fact that because you think of like the last three seasons every season has been we've been looking down the barrel of relegation yeah or 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 worse because then you look at if relegation does happen it's not just like in the 80s or the, even the 90s where you go down you probably come back up there's all these mm. other factors to it and yeah you're looking at y- y- your brain then catastrophizes and you go like 10 years down the line and you're playing the you know, League One, it, it, all sorts of horrible thoughts going to your head, which is absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? So it's been yeah. really good. But I don't think, is it, I, I'm losing track of when the, um, the Forest uh, points deduction came last out. Last Monday. After last the, month. It was after the last podcast we did, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So they've had, they've had the four. We were talking about six. They've got the four. 
there's been a bit of fallout with that this week, hasn't it? So there's obviously, obviously Evertonians were not happy because it was like, well, hang on now. We ended up with six and they ended up with four with the bigger Brie and we've had all of that stuff and now they're not happy and they don't know whether to appeal or not. Leicester have been done since and Leicester have gone off on one, but they're getting done either or, aren't they? They, they didn't get up, they were getting done and they, they get up, they're getting done. And Everton are just in the middle sort of going, well, hang on. Now they've said Chelsea are definitely getting done next season. There's two other teams on... to sell players by July. There's two other teams on the watch list, apparently. They're also now saying City are faced with expulsion. It's and, and we're at, I know, I know, and, and, and we're at a stage where you just look at the lead table, there's already two asterisks on the lead table. And Everton are in the middle of the net. Well, Everton are beginning their next hearing today, which I just find it there's, is um, there's like questions that can't be answered and certainly won't be answered by the Premier League on, on like everything, like even, even Leicester one. And I know they should only be punished in the Premier League, but then there's, there's, there's clubs in the Championship that will say, well, the players that they bought, which meant they breached, are, are helping them promote them now and mm. stopping us being promoted. Mm. So why can't they have the points deducted now? I know it probably doesn't work like that, but there's 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 no definition of how it all works, which no. is just crazy. That's the problem, really. And like, how can you how can you give someone who is punished who's had a more severe crime breached more a lesser punishment because they were nice? That doesn't make any sense. No, we've no. used all the analogies <laughs> we can do, so I'm not going to no, give no. you another one. But I, I can't crazy. I can't even I can't even keep track of what's going on, and I've run out of. Like, oh, it's a bit like X, it's a bit like Y. Yeah. We've done it all. It's like Brexit. There's no jokes left. We've just said everything <laughs> that we can. It's just, the whole thing just like a, a, a disaster. Mm. But if if Man City, I mean, one of the... <laughs> Man City's punishment, like expulsion, that's never going to happen, isn't it? No, I mean, the no. brand of Man City is so powerful in the mm. Premier League at this point. I made a joke saying, like, at, at this Man City's punishment will be that they have to go last on match of the day for one week. That'll be it. Yeah, just, yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of rhyme or reason. But here's a question for the period. Is if, if Everton get a second point deduction, will Everton be the first team in the history of sports or football to have not one asterisk, but two asterisks next to the name? And if so, normally they, they have an asterisk and they have another symbol that they mm-hmm. to denote the second yeah. one. What's the yeah. second symbol going to be? Oh, I don't think that the first, because Derby County got... Basically, the Football League basically made Derby County, made sure they relegated them. They give them 12 points, then give them another nine oh, on like, top of it. And when Rooney was, when that, Rooney was the manager, so they had 21 points taken off them in the season. And then they were like, oh, you were unlucky there. And they only got relegated in April, which imagine losing 21 points and it's it's near the end of April before you go down. Um, I reckon a cry and laughing emoji. I think that's what I think that's what the Premier League wants. Just like yeah, tears on and and head on the side, like head rolling, on the like, side rolling, screen, rolling yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah. Or a cock um, balls would do me. Well, that'd be one, wouldn't it? Big, that'd be a good a big one. aubergine, big aubergine. Yeah, <laughs> and a, a, a big, all right, all right, Ned. It is it is mad though, isn't it? Because where we are, I mean, what do we? What do we like this morning? I went. To, um, I went to get, I went to Tesco to grab something and I was on my way out. And some fella just went to say, how many points more do you reckon you're getting then? And I was like, from nowhere. Like, oh, all right, me didn't even say like good morning or anything on my name. You just threw, how many more points are you getting deducted at me? Um, so we had a brief chat, like, and he was like, he was a red, obviously. What, what he did, he was a red, but what he did say, which I found mad was, we had this little conversation and I said, why are you bothered anyway? We're no threat to you know, we're no threat, whatever. And he went, Well, we're we've we're crap this season. We're not gonna win anything. I was like, fucking hell, mate, two weeks ago you won a bleeding trophy. It's we've got to go back we might not thirty have years for us to have that. And they could win the league and the, the uh, Europa League. But anyway, he was so I was like, I th- I reckon if we get a point deduction it'll be two. I mean, Ned, first of all, do you think we will get a points deduction? There's a, there's a little bit of noise now, kind of saying <laughs> Everton won't get one because of the. But I, I'm not going down I, that road. I think we'll get. No, I, I'm very feeble, and the people. I'm, I'm glad me, you've admitted and, that. And the people around me, uh, who are more educated than me on this, believe that we will get points deduction because we are we have 
um, breached again. Mm. Um, obviously, because of the mitigating circumstances, we've already been punished for two out of the three of the years. Yeah. Because um, we can't go back to more than three years ago, so there's only one year that hasn't been punished. So, rightly, we should get... Well, if Travis got four points, we're being nice. If we're nice on this one, we might get one point. But it should be maximum three points based on the um, the six points we got before. Um, and if it sends us down... Do you see the thing with relegation in the past couple of years? Because we were there by fault off our own. I know we've had to sell players and stuff because of what's going on now, but... It was almost like, at first, I was like really petrified of relegation mm. and devastated. But imagine if you're really scared of getting punched in the face, but you keep getting punched in the face for two years over and over. Eventually, you're going to get used to it, aren't you? So over the over two years, I've been constant scared of relegation and being in relegation battle. I was just like, oh, do you know, if you go down, I'm not even half. Once it's happened, I'll still go to the match and I'll probably enjoy winning every week. I don't give it, I don't give it a toss anymore. Mm. But now, because if, if we get this point seduction, and that sends us down. It it feels so unjust. It mm. makes me feel sick. Mm. So and then the like the things with Forrest getting four points and stuff, because there's no, like Sam said, rhyme or reason to it. It mm. feels so unjustified. Um, That's the problem. And, and, and because I'm scared of it, I've prepared myself for the point seduction, and I've also prepared myself for maybe you know a really close relegation battle because of it. Because I I wouldn't be surprised if they go. No, here's another six points, mate. You've breached again. And we're not doing like, oh, oh you've been breached. No, you've breached six points. Mm. I, I I mean, Sam, where are you with it? What what are you thinking with this one? Well, I, I kind of, I got through phases where I pour over every little bit of information. And I, I would say the work you've done on this channel has been phenomenal. And, and breaking it down, making it digestible because it's such a complex issue. And um, John John Blaine, listen to him talk about it as well. It's been really, really enlightening. Mm. But now and again, I'll dip my head into national media. Yeah, that tends to just annoy me because you get a lot of waffle and a lot of noise and a lot of comments from people who've not really educated themselves on on the, you know the substance mm. of the matter. But then yeah. I think you get some really interesting stuff. Who's the football guy? Uh, Kieran. Kieran McGuire. Mm. Yeah, he was doing something really interesting, and he was he was just talking about, like, basically, he was saying the same thing that we're all saying, even though he's an expert, he was going, I don't know how they got to this, I don't know what mm. forest, I don't know how, I don't know how they worked it out, they don't seem to know, mm. which kind of gives you hope that it's not just us as fans kind of go, this is nonsense, it's, it's mm. I know a couple of forest fans who've gone, this is absolutely, makes no sense whatsoever, mm. so that's kind of enlightening, but then the phases that I go through, I'm this week, and it's probably off the back of the weekend. There's been no games. I'm just like I'm blissfully ignorant and happy yeah. to just float on a wave of nothingness and just yeah. not pour over the details, nothing about it too much, and just and just see what happens. And that that I know that will change because that's the way your brain's wired. But it's it's been quite nice to not have to get into the nitty gritty of factual stuff. That's not. What, when you when your dad takes you the match the first time, he doesn't sit yeah. down and talk talk to you about yes and and no. no. the year cycles and he doesn't. He goes, yeah, there's a hot dog. Shut up, and he, yeah. he has a biff the next year back in the old days. So, so um, it, you know, but it's just it has ruined the season, and a lot of people have said that it has ruined the season, mm-hmm. and we don't need help ruin the season. We can no. do it on our own. So. But it's just made everything inconsequential. Not not inconsequential, that's the wrong word, but what happens on the pitch is more inconsequential because they can just take stuff away from you at, mm. any, at any moment without actually explaining why. And like you said at the start, Baz, if by the end of the season there's asterisks all over the league, mm. what, are, what are we doing if everyone's breaking the rules? Mm. The rules clearly aren't fit for purpose. And they've admitted it by the fact of changing them. So, you know, we've had MPs from Nottingham calling for it to be scrapped, all suspended till they've got rules. The Fab Everton's fan advisory board kind of did similar the other day. It is it is it's a load of nonsense. And I think the most frustrating thing, I think, for Evertonians this season is the past two seasons, we've ended up where we were because, because of us. Mm. And this year, we've been given a kicking because of... And, and I mean, listen, I said the other day, and I, and I still believe it, we're not in danger of being relegated because we've had points taken off us. We're in danger of being relegated because we haven't won for nearly oh, four yeah. months. Yeah. So we've yeah. done, that. this has helped the rele- the getting the points taken off us put us in, has put us back in rocky waters. But if we'd have just won, 
three of the 11 games, we, we'd be clear of it sort of thing and go, we only need a couple of wins. But we've just got to get this week over and done with and hope that common sense is provided by this independent commission who look and go, Everton's second breach is, is not a big, because I, I don't see how it could be a big one, to be honest, this time. And they've already been punished, like you said, for two-thirds of the, the punishments. Um, and we, we don't believe in giving you Imagine multiple Imagine if our two breaches mm. are up to 28 million, mm. you know, 19. And yeah, 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 yeah. And then we get another points deduction. Mm. So we'd have been over overall over four years deducted what nine points if it's say we get three mm. points nine points for a breach 28 million over four years mm. and forest have had a breach of 30 33.5 for four million points. and for four points yeah. that doesn't make any sense no. and that's what i was talking about it feeling so unjust and it's also hard to assess where the team is at on the pitch when something like this has happened because... well the, i can tell you where they are the crap well yeah but moment. whether it's got taken, to whether it's taking pressure off them or put pressure oh, on them put pressure on obviously. it's obviously put pressure on it mm. in the early stage where we got the points mm. But then you also look and go, oh, you know, if we had the points, we'd be there and there. Mm. Mate, we're absolutely dire. Mm. And we're also, we stay up in the Premier League and we get through these breaches. What's next? Like, where are we going? Well, that was, I mean, the biggest thing, what we have to do is we have to draw that line underneath it, don't we? We have to draw that. If we, if we say we come out of this and they say it's, I don't know. Let's say they give us three points for breaching, right? Because that seems to be what the time they're tossing about, but I'm not convinced that it's mm. real. But Shady did, and then the panel went, but mitigation, you've been done for two of these three years, therefore it's one point. You get a point, one point deducted, because it was three, you've already been done for two, so it works out, yeah? You've had 66% of the punishments already, right? So you're getting one point, so Everton lose one point. We stay up. We win games, we stay up. And the takeover goes through, which looks like we've had more over the weekend, but it looks like that's gone on. We get to a place in the summer where we can kind of go, right, we can move forward now. And that's what we have to hope for as fans. And like Sam said, you know, that could get us to a place where next season we are 12, 13, but there isn't drama. We're, yeah. there. we're, we're never near in any kind of trouble at the bottom. And, we occasionally might be flirting with chasing the European spot, but we end up mid right in the middle, but with less stress, but bringing players. I think we'd all we'd all be happy with that as progress for now, wouldn't we, for one year going into then, of course, starting the next season at the new stadium and, and open for a brighter future. I mean, when you say progress, it's not just like, like this year, we could say there's progress because we're planning on more points. I, I mean progress towards like a... Like an end, not an end goal, but I want to see us see going in a certain yeah. direction. I want to see, see players. Right, we're getting better. We're, we're got starting pace to in the side. implement this style of play. Mm. We're getting the plays that's right for it. And you know we're walk, working towards the stage. And by the time mm. we get there, we might be on our way to you. Like like because we had Tony Grant in, didn't we? And mm. he said one good transfer window can, can change your team. There's no reason why in a couple of years, you know, or at least maximum five years, we can't be back. You know, battling with the likes of Brighton and stuff for Europe. I'd be fuming if it took five years, not because if you got it right this year, we could have been battling for yeah. it. But there's no, there's no real signs that we that we can get there and be sustainable. No, not there. at the moment. The, no, because there's too much yeah. distraction. There's too much other stuff going on. And not when you've gone so many games without a win. That's not sustainable. No, it's nonsense. Um, I mean, ba getting back to that, that's Everton. That's the, you know, it's done. We're back in action next week. A tough game at Bournemouth. It's up to us now, the managers. Got, they've had a break, like Sam said. Hopefully that resets. We've got 10 games to play. We've got to win at least four of them. That's where we are. Um, but over the weekend, I had my daughter's birthday today. So over the weekend, we've done done a couple of activities because there was no foot. It was great. Um, still spent both mornings watching me lad play football. But... On Saturday night, I went and experienced bongos bingo, Sam. I don't know oh, whether really? you've... Yeah, I don't know whether you've been. It was me missus and, and my daughter and all. Oh, they've been a few times and I was like, I'm never going. It sounds like hell. But my daughter asked me a while ago, my birthday, will you come? So, okay, we'll go. And I don't drink. I had one drink at seven o'clock when I got there and that was it. I was on, I drank like Coke and water and stuff and I drove home. I drove, I was the designated driver. 
I drove home at half twelve. My, my drink was five hours after I'd finished it. Ned <laughs> drinking water and everything, and I thought that it was only a thingy with, and I had lemonade with it, right? So I got in there and I was like, I'm not convinced here. You go in and it was bedlam, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure I will still be here at twelve when it finishes. But you know what? It was a laugh. It was a laugh, and I just got into it. And it was good, and you're up, and you've got to dance on. You've got to dance on blooming <laughs> um, benches and all that. And the, the so, you play. So, so what part is the actual an actual game of bingo? Yeah, there's there's five games of bingo in it, right? And you can win like uh, the prizes, like money, win money, and you can win a motorized scooter. Someone won a motorized scooter. Motorized scooter. scooter. Yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> Someone won a box of cocoa pops. Uh, Disney the, the princesses. The scooter, were they just if they're bladders, they just drive home on that. Well, that was that it. Legal? Three miles an hour. Uh, I don't know if it's legal, but if it's, un- if it's under five miles, she was from Warrington, so I don't know whether she was driving her home. Would have took her a while, I imagine. Trip, That's yeah, a that could be. A I've bit never of, been to Bongo's bit Bingo, bit but I, the closest I've been, I was in Belfast a couple of weeks ago, and mm. my uh, where my show was was in a different room. Right, and, uh, there's loads of, like snide versions of Bongo's Bingo now. Yeah, like, yeah. Goes Bongo and Bongo's mm. Bango, and they've all they all sound mm. the same. Yeah. My dressing room was above this Belfast Bongo Bingo version underneath. Right. And I got to my dressing room at about half six, so it's like tea time. Mm. And everyone downstairs is bladdered, and the table is shaking when the beast kicks in. Yeah. And every like. I, I don't know what I didn't know what was going on at first, but every thirty seconds or so, a new song would kick in, yeah, and everyone yeah. just go, "Yes!" and yeah. whatever song it was, and then it slowed right down. Mm-hmm. It did sound really good, sound mate. The boss. Honestly, you'd want to go and just go and try it once, like because I it, I was one of the I was a naysayer, absolute like <laughs> I am not going to yeah, that thing. It looks. I was a full-on Jimmy and Johnny Bongo skeptic. I'm not him because he's big Evertonian, so he sounds Johnny. No problem with that. And Slutty Susie apparently is an Everton season ticket holder as well. Um, he, was a, he was a man dressed up as a woman, Ned, just because in case you're looking at me like that. And there's another, I can't remember what the other one's called. I apologise, but it is. It's it was good, and and you write songs every few minutes. You know, every like three or four songs, and then you get down to, and it's like it's like being in a even disco as well. It's good. It was a good laugh. It was shocker. They are raking it in. Fair play to them. Oh, I, I, I was like, um, mm. I was like doing you like know when it started. It was about mm. ten years ago, wasn't it? Started. Nine years, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, nine years, so yeah. Just before it started, so I was I was still just on the circuit, and I was, yeah. I was just gigging away, and then I knew someone who owned a pub in town, and they said, oh, "We're trying this thing out." called rock and roll bingo would mm. you like to be the host i was like that sounds great how's it working well instead of numbers we play little clips of songs and if you yeah. got the song on your card you cross it off I was like, oh Whoa. okay for the, for the bingo world this was groundbreaking yeah oh god i think it was almost the day that i started doing that bongo's bingo started which has got hoovers on stage and he's throwing stuff yeah. at everyone yeah, yeah foam everywhere i'm going that was taylor swift and it was like so tame and boring and we lasted about three weeks. We just went, this, oh. is, this is crap. Let's oh. not knock this on the head. What could have been me? You could have been, been in. You could have. You could have been there because they're doing them yeah, in. Man. They've got places all over. Thingy. They're doing New York next. Got a couple of dates in New York and things like that. It, 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 so it's worth going to check out. It is mad. But if you just go in and go, you know what? I'm just going to have a laugh. It's sound and it was a good night. Good night was had by all. And it was it was How about the... updating some of the old parlor games then as well. We could mm, make so what? Right one. So, so what like, then? What could you do? Like, like uh, cocaine dominoes or something. Oh, I don't know. Or, I, or what are the other parlor games? Like shuffleboard. You've gone hard there, Tiddlywinks. Like <laughs> tequila <laughs> Tiddlywinks or something. Or That's something fair. like something like snakes and ladders. Snakes and gotta bladders. Be, gotta be fun like that. Snakes and bladders. Snakes and... Snakes, Snakes and, and bladders, I like yeah, that. Yeah, there's one. You know, you've got to have a, a shot every time you throw the dice or something. You've, um, <laughs> you've got to throw the dice. Every, you've got to throw the dice every and anyway, so you'll just be getting bladdered. Well, that's that's Snakes why it's called bladdered. Snakes and Bladdered, Ned. You've, you've sort of missed it there. But yeah, so it was good. So if you get the chance, Sam, go and experience it, because it is a bit mad. And you, Ned... I've done, I've done like... Ned, honestly, I think... 
I think no, I've, I've sang, I've like, sang that. No, 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 no. Bingo, bingos, but like venues like that, like I they'll think, have something on like that. I think you'd like the it. Same audience, and I'm just like, I think you'd like it. I think you'd have a good laugh, mate. I've honestly. done like I did a gig once in Hinley, and it was like a proper club, big, massive, proper music venue. Mm. And there was bango bingos, and they all came in after it, and it was booming, and everyone was absolutely bladdered already. Mm. And I was like, I need to go to bongos bingo, mate. Honestly, like, you really would, you would really like it because it was, it is, it was Full mad. Of, uh, if, if you just go, if you just accept it for what it is, it's a laugh. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I have a laugh at like so we don't everything. We've done that, and then yesterday done an escape room into escape rooms at the moment, Sam. Gotta be oh, said. Yeah. Yeah, the oh. sound, family thing. The good ones. I'd lose my patience so Why? quickly on them. Why would you lose your patience? Because I'm not very clever at figuring stuff out. I'm okay. punching on the wall going, let me out. Okay. Well, we don't want any. New... To... Go on, no, go on. My... No, my uncle went to an escape room in the 70s, but he's, he's not out yet. He's not got I out. <laughs> me a one. Not... Yeah, tough one, that one. That's a, that's a difficult <laughs> one to get out of. <laughs> this one was in New Brighton, and it was a World War II one. And the, the, oh. it was a live escape one, and the threat was you literally get um, captured by the Nazis if you don't do it, and they come marching in with the gear on. So you are up See, against... Nazis? Yeah, it was oh amazing. Oh, my God. It was amazing, honestly. We got, like, out. we got out. We got out. It is got, next got, level. You've got blue eyes. It is next level. <laughs> but uh, we got out, thankfully. But it's really good, honestly. It was a really good one. Like, you had loads what of... What kind of good. Nazis are they? Are they, like, scary I Nazis didn't see them because we escaped, Sam. We escaped. Oh, escaped. Okay. So we were, were all like, right. Well, I'm not I don't yeah. know. We escaped. Oh, I, I keep telling you, we escaped. Nazis. But it was, uh, it was really that good. Sounds incredible. It was at Fort Rock, is it or something that's called? No, what's it called? I don't know. It was good. It's in New Brighton, anyway. So go and check I've it out. I've never done an escape room. The good, you know. My wife, my wife's incredibly. Um, I forgot what what's it called. Claustrophobic. So, okay. like, the thought of an escape room to air is just, well, like... you can't just press a button and the door opens. You, you, right. You're not, like, locked in chains and you can't... It's not Houdini, Sam. Do you know what I mean? It would be illegal, probably, wouldn't there's it? A bit, there's a big... Yeah, it'd be illegal. There's a big free one in Merseyside called St. Helens. You've got to drive in yeah. and escape. Can you get out? Can you get out? Can you get out Excuse of it? Excuse me. But now it was... Ah. Uh, would you be up for doing something like that, Sam, yourself? Well, we went to a place on Saturday called the Quirky Quarter okay. on uh, the top of Duke Street, which isn't an escape room, but there's a, an escape room element at the start. But it's all like, there's, there's all like these perspective photographs you can take. So like, right. I sat on this chair at the back and my lad stood up in front and take a picture somewhere else and I look dead small and he looks dead big. Yeah. It's really good. And I'm not going to go back again. But it was really no, good. Was- and what more than done? Two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the ads all stuff like where you could, you know, you, you sit down and you look yourself in the mirror and it sort of makes you look older. I think that was just a normal mirror, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> that doesn't age. seem great. I'll be honest. Just me after a night out. Are they crow's feet? <laughs> they they arrive very quickly, hard and fast. Isn't it? So what were your gigs like at the weekend then? Ned? I had three. Really, 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 really good gigs, and I expected them to be all really bad gigs because it was Paddy's day week, Paddy's last weekend, yeah. And it was, um, was this like after the Lord Mayor show, you thought it'd be, and, and, and it's because it's bank holiday next weekend. I thought everyone's going to be out, oh, next weekend okay, yeah, last yeah, yeah. Weekend. But I ended up having three really good I was in Ashton Friday, Ashton Saturday, mm. and England was on before it, so it was nice to cheer everyone up, yeah. Um, and Sunday, I was in a place called Bamber Bridge, which you'll probably nice. know from playing football. I do really. know from playing football there, eh? Bamber Bridge, yeah. Preston, but... mm. And they had a little song quiz on yesterday. And what they do in this place called the Bear Box in Bamber Bridge, they have a song quiz. They put a clue in the morning, yeah. And then everybody comes in, hands their guests in, and then writes it on an envelope, and yeah. Hands it in, and then he creates a playlist and plays all the songs that people have guessed. And then at the end, he announces what the song was. And, and yesterday, the guess was it's a it's a song from a big 80s film. And I thought, a clue, a big lot. 80s film, the 80s film called Big. big. So my guess was, mm. nay, nay. But I got up and I played all my guesses. So I was I played The Lost Boys, People Are Strange. Um, I was and it was none of them, was it? Johnny B. Good from uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, very good. I played Stand By Me from Stand By Me. Did you play Take My Breath Away from Top Gun? No, but I, oh no, Berlin. I said to him, I said, I bet you it's Berlin, Top Gun. Mm. 
And then at the end, I said, did I, get, did I get it right? And he went, no, but you mentioned the film. So I reckon it's Danger Zone. Danger so, Zone, yeah. Um, yeah, Belter. I don't know what the answer is. Because oh, yeah, well, actually, you built us up. You haven't even given us the answer. But I want <laughs> to let it. the audience guess the answer, and then they can decide whether they're right or wrong. Which is more Bamba Bruiser than Bamba Bridge. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. They, they, you know, it, is. it was a good gig. Okay. Okay, we've got some random questions because the I always, I always like these random Exciting. questions just to see, you know, to see the answers that you two are going to give me. So the first one is, what's your secret talent? So we'll go to you, Ned, because you will astound us, I'm sure. I can move the bones in my body. But like bones that I think aren't we all can. No, but bones that aren't meant to be moved. I'll give us an example. If you're watching on the podcast, in fact, you can't even see this, but watch me knuckle. Yeah, that is. They look I more like tendons than your bone. No, they look me bones. That bones in your hands. Mm. I can move my bones. Okay. All right. That's a talent. Fair enough. Sam, have you got a secret talent? Well, apart from being a very generous lover, mm. I'm uh, I'm able to uh, open a bottle bottle of beer with another bottle of beer. It's just kind of boring. Oh, no, I'm that's really all sure right. It's useful. If you just, yeah. But it's just that if you've got three bottles of beer, I can open two of them and the last one I'm stuck with. Oh, okay, because so, you've, you've flicked the tops off, obviously. That's, that's, that's not bad, though, to be fair. That is not bad. Um, it's probably not a Britain's Got Talent standard of... Well, know, I don't know. I've joking, joking aren't Britain's you? Like, the other year, a fellow went on it and just ran around and took vests off and, and, won, was, and got gosh, to the mate, final. He was funny. He won it. Did he win? He won it. For running around in a circle. <laughs> He won it, like Vs or something, whatever his name was. That's he did, ridiculous. yeah. He just ran around and clapped him and had, like, different high-vis jackets on. talent. Well, he was talented because he won it. Um, as a child, what was your favourite game to play? Peter Jackson, King Kong, easily. Just run around as a giant gorilla. That was your favourite game? Peter Jackson's King Kong on the Xbox original. Oh, okay. Easily. I think, I, all right, I mean, I think it meant, like, more, like, what was you? You've gone computer, which is fine. Which is fine, you are a young... We used to play this game called, it's probably very inappropriate, but German bees. And literally we'd have the Nazis versus the English and we'd just batter each other. <laughs> okay. Then, there's another one. That went dark. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> Sam, same question to you. When you said, what, Peter Jackson's King Kong? I thought, yeah, I mean... Running around with your top. I thought Peter Jackson was always <laughs> in your school and he was King Kong. It took me a while to... Do you want a fun fact? Yeah. <laughs> My father-in-law yes. is called Peter Jackson. Is he, yeah? Mm. I love his work. He, he's very good, very good director. So go on, Sam. What, is your, uh, what was your favourite game, game to play? We used to play a game called the car game. Okay. Which was, you'd all stand at the bottom of our road. And yeah. then when a car came, you'd have to let it down the road and jump over the hedge in my dad's front garden before the car got to you. Not that the car was, the car was on the road, you were on the yeah. pavement. I was say, sounds dangerous, like, but fair play. Can you beat the car to the hedge? You would beat the car because they'd be turning and you just get a pelt you on go. and you just like jump over the hedge. Mm -hmm. But there'd be like nine years, so people would be diving through the hedge. His dad did like an extra jeopardy. Yeah. It was, it was a good game. I, I guess it improves your speed. Nothing was better than Kirby. I was going to say Nothing. Kirby would have been one of mine. Kirby was a belter. I, I like was putty Kirby or normal Kirby. No, normal Kirby throwing it with... But I should just go like full like, like Leighton Bays and just go... On the curb. Does Leighton Baines play Kirby, did he, in Kirby? He took throw-ins. I just want Oh, okay. Just like to take Fair throws. enough. Well, there you go, then. You must... I kids didn't play heads and volleys, though. Do you remember, mm. do you remember playing Wembley, where you'd have, like, you'd have, like, the, the outfield team would be one team and the goalie would be another team. And mm. then you'd go through the Epic Cup and then you get to the final. And in my head, like, the memories of some of those games, like, were really actually at Wembley. Like, in my head. In your it was, head. It felt real. Didn't it? Mm. When you're like eight, oh. you're like heading it in and you're just, you know, celebrating, silencing the away fans and everything. Oh. Brilliant. We used to have one where there'd be a group of us, so there'd be, they'd always have like, there'd be five of us, say, who were always together. So what we'd do is we'd have 2v2 two two with a goalie and we'd have the goal and then we'd have a point at like about, say, 40 yards from the goal and that had like either a stick or or a top or something, and that signalled the halfway line. So a team would kick off two people and attack. So obviously, 
Sam and Ped against me and you, they kick off. We'd have to defend. And if we nicked the ball, we had to break to the halfway line, go round the stick or the thing, and then we were attacking. Do you know what I mean? And we'd have the game. They were boss games. And you, we play, you'd play like, I don't know, 10 minutes each way or whatever. Loser has to go in the goal for the raw ass. But the keeper, no, no one had... No, we were just proper footballs. It wasn't to do with Raw. <laughs> what is it about That's you the fighting? No, the loser raw ass. ass. Just get balls smashed at their ass. It's brilliant. Again, you lived in St. Helens, so fair play. It's probably a Friday night thing. Um, but yeah, we had great times. The two bins for the posts. So, oh, loved it. There's this field outside of mine, and it's got two field per- of dreams. Perfect trees. Two oh, perfect okay. trees. Oh, what are you going to say? And with like, a little slope behind it. So we kicked the ball through the trees. It just goes into the slope. I mean, most of the time it ended up on the road, like, but... Okay, if you, if you hit the target, then it's perfect. Two perfect trees, perfect distance. Mm. Oh, it was, it was just the best time ever. Great times, great times. How would you sum up the internet in two sentences? Let me Google. <laughs> <laughs> the internet. Um, a search engine for the searching... So you'd have to, that's one though, isn't it? So you'd have to do a search engine, full stop. The internet is great. It helps me search things. Okay. That's a fair play. Go on, Sam. From it so much, ultimately ruined everything. I like, <laughs> see, I like that. I like that. Game is called Penguin, Sam. It's one of them though, isn't it? It is one of those things, isn't it? The, you know, you, uh, again, sound massively old and one of those, you know, oh, but when you think the box is open in it and it can never be closed, it's like... Oh, yeah. And every so- photo and every post and every thought that you ever posted on social mm. media is there forever and ever and ever. That's- and aliens will find it and they'll go, that's Sam Avery was right, knobhead, some of the things he was saying. And you're like, wow. Where is... Like, you don't have podcasts. You, I mean, mm. podcasts are amazing. YouTube channels like this. It's, oh, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's fantastic. But there's there's so much bad stuff, isn't it? The fact mm. that everyone's got a, 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 a vehicle to be able to talk about all of their thoughts and all of their opinions yeah. is uh, sure, uh, surely that's not a good thing. There's it's bad not about everything, thing. isn't there? But you have to learn to take the bad with the good. And there's a lot of good with the internet. And I remember like growing up, like, it wasn't properly like, you know, like early 2000s, it wasn't properly established yet. We didn't have YouTube until 2005 or something. Facebook was later and all that stuff, social media. So the computer internet for me was just like, every now and again, I'd get a little half an hour on my mum's computer mm. and I get to go and Club Penguin. And it was just, it was brilliant. It just gave me something to do rather than going outside and playing with, you know, girls, because all the people in my street were girls. Doing proper things that you should have been doing. Well, I still went out and played fussy and stuff and climbed trees. No, it... it fights, but... Listen, you're right. It's, it, uh, you, it's done unbelievable stuff. It's unbelievable where they are simply because of the internet, doing this because of the internet, aren't we? But it is, there is a lot of damage. And Sam, you're right, it's like some of those people's thoughts would have stayed in their heads, wouldn't they? They would have just been a place they either lived in their head or occasionally they might have set them down at the pub with the mates or out and about with the mates or whatever and, and would have been told, like, why yeah. you necking? Or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and that would be it. Yourself- you know, if you've been on social media, do you ever find yourself? I found myself like having having a feeling, like an emotion, and sometimes it's like it's a negative emotion. I'll feel anxiety or I'll feel fear. Mm. But I've scrolled on. I can't remember what it is that's caused that feeling. So I'm feeling <laughs> negative feeling, and I can't even attach a meaning to it. I'm like, yeah. why do I? F-? It's like that's it's not how it all, is it? But no. then, yesterday, I watched a video of a little turtle on a little skateboard chasing a cat so swings and roundabouts oh it? every cloud every cloud there's always the pet one the pet ones are always the best the internet was created for cat videos yeah, to be the honest dogs make the pets the pet ones are brilliant they really are they're the ones that make you laugh aren't they they're the ones that you go oh it's amazing look at it i i needed to see this uh this beaver getting washed yeah, like oh this... it's a different video but you know there's a lot there's a lot of things isn't there where You'll see dogs on, you know, about the monkey right with the helmets on riding the scooter. Oh, what was that one? Um, oh, the monkey on a pig. Oh, what was the song? It had a song. 
Oh, I remember, monkey, yeah. Oh, monkey on a pig. Monkey. Oh, I can't remember what it was Monkey now. on a pig. Monkey on a pig. I can't remember what it, what it went like. Right, so I'm moving on from this. What's it. one thing you wish you knew five years ago? I wish that I knew what I know now. No, I've just asked you the question. Um, I wish I... I wish I discovered the Brian Jonestown massacre earlier. Oh, okay. Sam, one thing you uh, wish you knew five years ago. I wish I'd started a conspiracy theory YouTube channel in 2020, oh. about February, and just filled it with nonsense because I would be way too way too rich and powerful to be talking to the likes of you two right now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely, you would have, mate. I wish I knew what Sam knew five years ago. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. I wish I knew this year. He was a nightmare five years ago. I was starting to feel like he was a bit of, he could be a bit of an issue, but I wish I really knew so that I could start mentally preparing myself for where we are with Everton <laughs> right now. That'd, that'd be a great sci-fi show about an Everton fan who goes back in time to 2018 oh. or 17. What, what, yeah. 16 was it? When he 16 when he tries, took over, yeah, yeah. Tries to stop tries to stop it yeah. the club because and everyone's a yeah. you're a lunatic this is yeah. obviously a good thing but it's it's got this hasn't it it goes back Bill Bill it's not you it's your club Bill we gotta go back <laughs> to the future <laughs> that would be a good film that wouldn't it mm. that would have been a good film but imagine if at that time you would have had some kind of you know the way you can have those mushrooms what are they called the Hueska ones or whatever it's called. I, I, I <laughs> and you take I them don't and apparently you get... I don't condone stuff like that. No, it's a... it's a. You don't just go and cut them down a forest net and smoke them. It's done under, like, supervision and everything. But they're supposed oh. to be able to, like, look into your mind or whatever. Imagine if you had one in, like, 2016, 2017. 2017 in particular, when, when Machiri was splashing the cash and you had it and you seen a vision and this was, like... Listen, I've you know I've been sent from the future. Future Baz itself, future Ned is, is vis- telling you. So when you take these, is a nightmare. When you take Get these said mushrooms, um, do you always see the future? No, no. I was just using that as Nick because you see things in your past and you try to people use it to correct issues. They've had, see, right? so if it wasn't guaranteed, you I wouldn't. Sh- I wouldn't want to go through that. No, but I'd imagine anxious. it was real, though, right? Just imagine it was real, and you had to come back, like Sam said, at that time. When Steve Walsh was like that, money, just throwing money at every player, and you had to come back and go, this is this is all gonna end terribly. Stop imagine doing it the now. Trailer. Honestly, imagine I've the trailer it. for David Carson's not gonna work out. We don't need any more number ten. Yeah, imagine <laughs> there probably was already people that told him to stop, or probably preempted that. No, but imagine you see that model. right, and then it fast forwards to like. The future, and you see like James Rodriguez, and we're all like, get in. And then the next minute, Rafa's on the touchline doing all this. But then imagine going and back, headlines, and trying to do like something about it. And, and they're like, shut up, kid, you're about 12 and you're ginger, and there's nothing you can do. And you're like, no, yeah, there's nothing what, you can do about it. But that's it. the point, isn't it? I feel, that's how I feel now. Imagine it's Sam, just like that, stop. This is all going like, to go when, wrong. When, when imagine to, how many people would have gone. When was about I'll to listen buy to Mel, you. Pay. No. Yeah. We've gone from Romelu Lukaku got, to like, Neil Mo. The Mopin. biggest Everton voice on YouTube, and we're like, stop signing crap players. Hello, Neil. <laughs> oh, my God, imagine. <laughs> it would be... It, it, imagine the looks you would have got. You would have got those looks from me, by the way. I was delighted when there was money to spend, again, and it was like, right, come on. Let's start getting better. I'm a big pessimistic, so I never thought it would be any good anyway. See, I don't believe that. I don't. I honestly, it's easy to say that looking back on. No, I look back and I remember. So I've gone. When Machiri come in, you were about. You, in, you still were wearing nappies, or were you onto the? I'm a big boy 15, now, pulling your pants up. <laughs> Maybe sixteen, seventeen. So you were but sixteen, I remember, seventeen. I remember so post. at sixteen, which is only seven years ago, so you weren't sixteen when Machiri come in. You were fourteen I, I years remember, of age. And this is this is like my claim. I remember fame. when. Hey hey remember hey. When we we're back to that rock and roll bingo. We here, signed. Sam. Come on. We signed Sigurdsson and Klassen, um, Sandro and Vlasic was all at the same time. And Wayne Rooney, yeah. And they put, and Everton put a post on Facebook going, "Oh, how many will these score this year?" Mm. And I like like shared it on Facebook like a, like a quote retweet mm. in the preseason going, 
more like how many games they'll play. They all play the same position. No one know, but when and, you're... and then everyone was like, "Oh, I can't wait!" Yeah, and then they ended up like my thing was like right. Well, not I, really. I, I never. I I was like I remember we signed Balassio as well. I was like, mm, he's he's got nice skills. No no none of the signings apart from Rooney really inspired me to go like yeah we're gonna be a great team. No, now. but I'm talking about splashing the money. I'm not necessarily talking about who came through the door. Well, that was a thing for I'll me. I'll be honest, Ned. I think what we're going to take from this today is that you are just depressing. No, I'm a, I am. You couldn't at a moment when we were spending money, you still couldn't enjoy no, it. I, I never expect anything good. Maybe that's the lower well, my I'm expectations. Glad I did but... enjoy it at the mm. time, even yeah. though it was completely misguided. Because mm. I feel like they're my happy ever memories of recent years where we had mm. all this money and we were spunking it up the wall on yeah. the dross. But it mm. sounded and felt exciting at the time. So. Mm. In lieu of a trophy, I'll take that memory as a happy memory, even though in hindsight it was all really, really bad decisions, wasn't it? Oh, it was just, it was just fair coat, no knickers, wasn't it? Basically, my, my happy memories is just, you know, David Moyes, late 2000s, 2008, 9, 10. Even like when we signed Yelovich and he was just scoring, like he just couldn't stop scoring for ages. Well, mm. for a half months. a season. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh, great times, isn't it? I'm sad. You've brought the podcast mood right down. We, we, me and Sam come up with a good film there and you were supposed to take it on and run with it and be excited and you basically like just that. went, I, I like told them back in 2016, life. it was all going to be terrible when I was 31, but you couldn't do the sums. When Michelle come in, you were 13 or 14 years of no, age. No, I was well older than that. He's been here now. How old are you? 20, I'm 24 this year. Right, so no, so you're 23 been. right now. So I would have been... No, listen 15. to me. You're 23 right now. So Mishiri came in eight years it ago. Was end of Mich- it was end of Martinez's... Yeah, Mishiri so. came in eight years ago. Yeah, I was 15. So you were 15. So you weren't 17 like you started. I wasn't 12. Well, it feels like you were 12. 15. It feels very much like you I were 12. I kind of feel so like I am 15. Let's finish on a high. Sam, where are you up to gigs-wise and all that? Are you, you're on a... Have you gone full Ross from Friends now? You're on a break or are you... Are you still, what are you doing? Where are you up to? What's going on? I've got, I'm at Hot Water in Liverpool this Friday and Saturday. So Ooh. I'm set there. I'm just starting to work on my next show, but my next yeah. tour's starting from next year now. So I've got to eat it. So I'm oh, just kind okay. of messing about with ideas and stuff. Yeah. So I've got these two gigs, then I've got a nice little two week break. Right. Um, just, you just need a bit of time. Like we were saying about everything, you just need a bit of time. You just turn your brain off and just yeah. stop thinking about stuff. But, That'll be cool because that's a great club in town. Like, so then it's about. What time are you on? on Hot water on Friday. I don't know. There's about 15 shows over the weekend. So I'm on every hour on the hour, I think, like a cuckoo clock. I'll just pop out and do my stuff and pop back in. So it's going to be brilliant. Be, I've got a nice cool. But I also Friday. watch Gladiators with my kids because it's the semi final and I've got well into oh. this this new season of Gladiators. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, a glad the TV so. show. Hmm? I thought you meant the Russell Crowe yeah, one. There's no semi-final of the Russell Crowe oh, film. I thought like, like semi-final of the, the film competition with the kids. I'm choosing Gladiator. Let's oh, okay. So what, Sam has a full competition yeah, for like, the, who can decide on what film. film they watch. Okay. We have group Positive. stages and seasons and everything. Oh, fair play. And finally, as it's Easter weekend, are you still, at your age, will you still be given an Easter egg by your mum and dad? Uh, I, I hope so. I do hope so. Yeah. Well, my originally my original plan was I'm going camping mm. with my mate, and I was like, let's get some Easter eggs and mm. come around, and we can try and find them. We can be like, ah, oh, you found that. Was one. this your idea? Yeah, and they said okay. no. Yeah, I, yeah, no, let's un- just get, unsurprising. Let's just get blooded. I was like, fine. But surely you got to take some Easter eggs to eat while you're drunk. That would be good. That's a good idea. But what I have got, I've bought myself a disposable barbecue. Don't put an Easter egg on a disposable so, barbecue. I'm going to do stupid. sausages on it. With an Easter egg? No. Okay. I'm, I'll eat the Easter egg also, but just not. Well, use it for your dessert. I'm not going to grill the Easter okay. egg. Okay. If you, if you had to. Barbecue. Oh, exactly. If you were to choose an Easter egg, what you'd want your mum and dad to get you, which one would it be? <sighs> See, the Easter eggs always like pretty much taste the same. It's what you get with it. I'd want a mini egg one because mini eggs, those packets of mini eggs, you like that? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, Sam, will you be partaking in the old Easter eggington over the weekend? And if so, what would be the Easter egg of your choice? Uh, well, I used to like the cheap stuff, and cheap, 
ch- chocolates I used to like, but now oh, okay. there's uh, Lindor ones. I'm oh, you're on now. them. So I've sort of dropped a few things around my wife for a Lindor one. So Belter. I'm going to buy her a Lindor one. If she doesn't get me one, I'm going to eat hers. Well, that's, I mean, hey, that's clever. That's just backing Jesus yourself up. It, it is what he would have wanted. Will there be a little breakage and knocking them together like horses? You know, when yeah, like you know, like, like Monty like Python. See if you can hear the sea. Hear the sea, yeah. How, how do you crack one. into an Easter egg? Because you can't just go. What's gone rubbish now? I go. They just break you, but they used to be. You should come apart quite easily, so you could do it. But yeah. now, it's oh, like, like welded. Like you that. might have to drop like, them sometimes. Yeah, having a fight with it. I used to bash my on a tray. Like, There's a lot that. of aggression oh. coming out of you today, Ned. I don't know whether I'm feel it's safe. It's a good release in the studio. <laughs> I'm starting <laughs> to be a little... push man down the stairs. Just a little nudge. Just and yeah. See what it goes. And, 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 when it cracks at the and end, then it cracks. Yeah. It's like that with chocolate oranges, if you ever have them, now they're getting worse. You'd have to like drop them on like tile oh. floors and stuff to get the the what are they called? That's a that's a great Easter activity segments. to do with your kids, Sam. That's it. Segments couldn't think of the bleeding way. Get your kids and get loads of eggs and just with your kids, just come up with the most like fun ways to crack them open. And when they crack, you turn to the kids and you go, yeah, and you'll go, yeah, and high five and stuff. Just cracking Let's eggs. Pretend we're the police. This is a suspect. Go. Off we yeah. go. Ned's back to his Nazi versus the English game again, isn't he? Have a game of rugby. <laughs> Bang. Yeah. I think we better, before you <laughs> descend and, and make this podcast even more terrifying, I think we should finish there. We have to say Ped is being away this weekend, so he's not in. And Dave Vitti, pretending he's really busy again, couldn't be with us this week. Both are pencil back in for next maybe week, apparently. Maybe he's stuck in New Brighton. He's stuck <laughs> in. Get Dave didn't them. get out the room. Dave yeah. couldn't escape, so <laughs> therefore he's been detained for at, his, uh, yeah, at someone's pleasure. Right, Sam, big thanks, mate. Have a great week. And hopefully when we Thank talk you. next week, we might have some indication of what Everton's punishments maybe, maybe has been. And we might be a little bit further down the road with the takeover as well. But have a good one, mate. I uh, hope the gigs go Thank well you. at the weekend. Where, where is it again? Hot? Hot water. On Hot the water. Street. On Harbin Street. Hot water comedy yeah, yeah. club. Hot Get down there club. and check Sam out over the weekend. Friday and Saturday, he's on there. Big thanks from me and Ned. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you all next week. Bye.